I want to talk to you for the next few minutes about coming to a place of becoming. As we journey down the path of discovering our spiritual identity, um, I, I believe this plays a key role in that journey. Have you ever come to a place where you said, oh, do you remember the good old days? Do you remember that? I was at a great job and I, our finances were in really good uh, position. Um, our family was doing great. That house that we lived in, it was a wonderful house. And our life was smooth sailing. Have you ever been there? Because I know I've, I've been there where I've looked back and I've seen the things that have happened in the past. And I have enjoyed the memories of the past more than I have enjoyed the current situation of life. And that's an easy feeling to uh, inhabit. That's an easy place to live in. And I got to tell you, it's a really deceptive thought process that says that was a good time. And this time, uh, th this season of my life that I'm in now, it can't compare or I'll never again get back to that position in life. Um, I, I want to take a look at what scripture has to say about that. And I want to share with you something that the Lord spoke to me. So about a month ago, I was driving, uh, I was on the way to uh, grab some things from the store, and I had had a particularly good day, and the Lord reminded me of uh, my past, and the Lord the Lord said to me, he said, do, do you see where I've brought you? Um, and, and I... And so I began to take an inventory of my life. I, I took an inventory of my family life, uh, of my marriage. I took an inventory of my health. I took an inventory of uh, the season of ministry that the Lord has me has me in. in. And and I answered the Lord. I said, "Yes, Lord, I, I see where you've brought me from, and I see where you're taking me, and this journey that I'm on. I, I see that." And I just began to thank the Lord. And uh, because I remembered where I had come from, and I remembered, um, I remembered both good and I remembered difficult times. I remembered uh, um, blessings and I remembered difficulties that I'd faced in the past, um, near past and distant past. And the Lord said to me, "Kara, I have brought you to a place where you are doing things." Um, with the help of my Holy Spirit that you never thought you would do. And I was just broken. How I just, a wave of thankfulness washed over me. And I, I just, I just said, almost in tears, I said, thank you, Lord, that you have brought me here. And I can look back and see where you've brought me. But I have to admit that the steps along the way that we took, that I took along with the Lord, I didn't see myself coming on the journey. I didn't see that this step here would lead me to that destination down there. I didn't see that the, the past three steps were bringing me to this place right here. But, you know, I can look back now and I can see where the Lord's brought me from. I can look back now and I can see how the Lord has orchestrated my life, how the Lord has woven all the different parts together to get me to where I am right now. And I want to I want to look at scripture really quickly. I want to go to Philippians chapter 3 and see what Paul has to say. Uh, beginning in verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And the Lord brought that scripture to my mind on that day where I was driving to the store. And he said, he said, he reminded me that there were moments along the journey where I just sat down on the side of the road 
and where I looked back and I said, Lord, I really liked it back there. That rest stop that I was at back there, I really liked it. The vending machine was really good. Um, the accommodations were nice. It was cool. The sun wasn't too hot on the journey. Um, and then I've come to places where I, I've um, cursed the difficulties that I faced. Lord, I really don't like this. My car just ran out of gas and I'm starving. And the situation that you have me in is really irritating me and it's pressing me. And I'm sure you can identify that there have been difficulties on the journey of faith and there have been blessings and there has been ease on the journey of faith that you have taken. And looking at the context that Paul is sharing these uh, thoughts in, Paul, uh, a few verses earlier, Paul gives his pedigree and he says, if you think you have things to boast about, I just want to let you know that I, I have condescended from a very great height. My pedigree is strong. I come from the most Jewish of Jews. So if you think you have a good pedigree, mine's better. And he says, if you think you're learned and you, if you think you know a lot, then you have no clue how learned I was. But for the sake of knowing Christ, I have forsaken all of that, that I could know him and that I could experience his power and that I could grow into what it is that the Lord wants me to, to grow into, that, in, that I could be all that the Lord wants me to be. Here's how he says it. Brothers, I, in verse 13, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. The pedigree that Paul had, the learning, the position, um, he was a Pharisee, the position in the law that he held. He considered all of that rubbish. But continuing on in verse 13, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And so I think we can take a lesson from him from from the apostle Paul he had a lot to lose and he gave up a lot when he committed his heart to Christ just like some of you probably have had a great time in your job some of you have given up um, a great position financially some of you may be walking through a bumpy um, journey right now you may look back at what was and say how do I move on from this situation in my life? It, um, it was a good situation, and the Lord brought me many blessings. And all I see ahead of me is difficulty. And all I see ahead of me is challenge. I want to encourage you to, um, to press on. I want to encourage you to forget what is behind. When, when the Apostle Paul says, the one thing I do, forgetting what is behind... That forgetting part, we have to forget what was good. We have to forget what was difficult. We have to forget that great job that we have. We have to forget that difficult boss that scarred us. We have to forget the financial ease that we had. We have to forget the struggle that that um, that relationship was in, in the past. We have to forget all of it. Forgetting what is behind means forgetting what's good and forgetting what's bad. And then he goes on straining toward what is the what is ahead. Paul didn't say it was going to be easy. Paul said, forgetting what is behind, I press. Um, he said, I strain. He used verbs that help us to understand that it's going to be hard work. You know, it's going to be it's going to be something that requires effort for you to be able to release the things that are holding you back. I had someone ask me once, so what do I do? My past was so perfect. And the life that's in front of me, I, I just um, don't find as much joy from. What do I do if the past was perfect? How do I move on from that? And my answer is simple. If we were meant to live in the past, then it wouldn't have been the past. It'd be the present. We simply press on because that's what we do. We don't get up. You would never get up and wear the same underwear that you wore yesterday. In the same way, we press on. Today's a new day. Today is a fresh day, a fresh opportunity for newness in Christ. Put on a fresh pair of spiritual underwear and move forward. 
It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. The reward for staying where you are and for not growing in Christ and for for not moving forward will be minimal. You know, you you may um, you may gain some recognition by the things that you do with your own hands, but if you press forward in Christ, the the gain is infinite. Um, in the same passage or in that same chapter, Paul says, "I consider it all rubbish." Oh, but that I may know Christ. The reward is knowing Christ in the power of his death and in the power of his resurrection. The reward for knowing Christ for Paul was far greater than the reward that he could achieve from any status, than the reward that he could achieve from, from his heritage, than the reward that he could achieve from his education and his training and, and, and his position that he had earned as a result of his hard work. The Lord has a hope and a future for each one of us, but if we do not forget and let go of what is behind, then we can never press on towards what is ahead. What is it that Christ Jesus has laid hold of you for? What is the purpose that he has put in your heart? What is the goal that he has, um, that he has given you? And I want to tell you, press forward to that goal today. I want to tell you to leave behind the past. I want to tell you to forgive that person. I want to tell you to let go of the blessings of the past. Girls, throw away those size two jeans. I, I, men, give up that dream job that you had. Look at and you say, man, that was it. If I could freeze frame my life in this one era, I would freeze frame it here. Let go of that. Because that's not the goal for which Christ has called you heavenward. Christ has called you heavenward for great things and great purposes. And it's revealed in his book. Ask God to give you a fresh vision for what it is that he wants you to accomplish with your life. That goal that is just on this side of heaven. Ask God to strengthen your resolve to not rest on your laurels. Ask God to give you the insight that you need in order to release those things that are holding you back. Don't make excuses. Don't allow anything to stand between you and the prize for which God has called you heavenward.